Hi guys, it's Mina, and today I'm going to be rereading you guys Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in the New Reading Corner. Here is what the inside of the book looks like. There's somebody's name in the book, so um, I don't even know who that is, and this was given to me as a gift. Here's what the inside of the book looks like. Long, long, long ago in the magnificent castle, there lived a pretty young princess named Snow White. Her wicked step, I mean, her stepmother, the queen, was a wicked woman whose greatest fear was that Snow White's beauty would one day become greater than her own. And so Snow White was dressed in rags and forced to be her stepmother's servant. Her long days were spent scrubbing floors and cooking meals. Still, the evil stepmother worried that worried as Snow White grew, so would her beauty. Every day, the queen looked in her magic mirror, anxiously asking, Mir "Magic mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of one of all?" You are the fairest one of all, the mirror would always reply, and the queen would be content for another day. Snow White was an obedient stepdaughter who happily did her work while daydreaming of a handsome prince who might one day fall in love with her and take her to live with him in his castle. One morning, as she drew water from the well, she made a wish that someday her dream would come true. As if by magic, a handsome young prince be appeared before her. He had always been watching Snow White as she drew water from the well and was entranced by her beauty. But Snow White was shy and fled to the tower balcony. As the prince sang her a love song below, Snow White placed a kiss on her friend the dove who carried it to her beloved. On that day, the queen's magic mirror told her told the queen that Snow White was the fairest in all the land. In a jealous rage, the queen called her royal huntsman, Take Snow White far into the forest and kill her, she commanded, and as proof of your deed, bring me back her heart in this, and she handed him a carved box. The huntsman began his deadly mission, telling her they were going for a walk. He took Snow White deep into the forest. Snow White sang a happy tune, gathering flowers and thinking of her handsome prince. Among the flowers, she heard a cry of a baby bird that had fallen out of its nest, and she found the little creature. She picked it up and comforted it. Don't worry, your mama and papa can't be far, she cooed. Feeling better, the little bird set off to find, his, find its parents. When they reached the heart of the forest, the huntsman drew his dagger. As he crept up behind, the snow, behind Snow White, she turned and screamed, realizing that realizing what was about to happen. I am so sorry. I cannot read today at all. When the huntsman saw the fear in the princess's eyes, he fell to his knees. I beg of you, your highness, forgive me, he pleaded. He told Snow White of the queen's jealousy and how he was ordered to bring Snow White's heart back to the castle as proof of his deed. Now, qu now quick, child, he told her. Run, run away, hide. Snow White was very frightened. She gasped and whirled around and ran into the forest. The woods were dark and full of strange noises and frightening sights. As Snow White ran pa past, past, owls hooted and bats beat their wings overhead. 
Even the trees seem to reach out with, to her with their branches and watch her with glowing eyes. Snow White ran faster and faster, and when she could run no more, she fell to the ground and began to weep. When she had finished crying, Snow White looked up and found herself surrounded by forest animals. Slowly, they moved closer, realizing that they had nothing to fear from the kind princess. They're so cute! I'm sorry, I love animals. They're so adorable. The forest creatures comforted their new friend, and soon Snow White... Sorry. I was itchy. Snow and Snow White was feeling much better. I do need a place to sleep at night, she told them. Maybe you, you know where I can stay. Will you take me there? Instantly the raccoons coons tugged at them the hem of her tugged at the hem of her skirt and began to guide her through the woods. The deer, rabbits, chipmunks, squirrels, and birds followed close behind. Soon they were at the edge of the clearing. Sn clearing. Snow White pushed aside the bushes and saw a charming little cottage nestled among the trees. She ran towards it, towards the house, crossing over the little bridge just in front of it, and peered in one of the windows. I guess there's no one home, she exclaimed. Inside the cottage, Snow White saw seven little chairs. Why, seven little children must live here. Seven very untidy children, she remarked to the animals. Indeed, wherever Snow White looked, she saw dirty dishes, dust on furniture, and cobwebs everywhere. I know, we'll clean the house and surprise them, she told the forest creatures. Maybe then they see what we've done. They'll... Maybe when they see what we've done, they'll let me stay. Together, Snow White and the animals cleaned the little cottage and made it tidy. When they finished cleaning downstairs, Snow White and her friends went to see what they might find upstairs. At the top of the staircase was a door, door, and beyond it, Snow White saw seven little beds. Look, each bed has their name carved on it, Snow White said, and she read the names out loud. Doc, Happy, Sneezy, Delpy, Grumpy, Bashful, and Sleepy. Snow White yawned. I'm a little sleepy myself, she said. Then she stretched out across three beds and fell fast asleep. Meanwhile, in a nearby mine, the seven dwarves were work, were hard at work work digging for diamonds. They not seven little little children were were the ones in the cottage Snow White had found. Each dwarf had his own special job, job to do. Doc stood at the table and peered at the diamonds through the jeweler's glass. He saved the good diamonds and tossed away the bad ones and Dopey swept up. As night fell, the dwarves headed home. With their picks slung over their shoulders, the seven dwarves marched in, t in a line. Doc took the lead with Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, Sneezy, Bashful, and Dopey following behind. Even though they were very hungry and tired from their hard day's work, the dwarves sang a happy song as they marched along. When the dwarves, co dwarves neared their cottage, Doc stopped in the tracks. Look, the lit's light. I mean, the light's lit. S Something's in there, he cried. 
though they were not they though they were worried that they might find a ghost or a scary creature inside all of the dwarves bravely followed doc into the house to investigate the dwarves slowly opened the door and crept into the cottage trying not to make a sound careful men doc whispered the others tiptoed up behind him. Our window's been washed, said Happy. Look, the floor, it's been swept. Been, it's wind bept. I mean, been swept, noticed Doc. There's dirty work afoot, Grumpy grumbled. He was always suspicious. Suddenly, they heard a noise upstairs. One of us has got to go go up, go down and chase it up. I mean, go up and chase it down, muttered Doc. The dwarves quickly elected Dopey to lead the way. Don't be afraid. We're right behind you, they all whispered. Quietly and carefully, the dwarves climbed up the stairs one by one until they reached the bedroom floor. The, until they reached the bedroom. They, they inched into the room and saw a sheet, sheeted figure stretch across the beds. Snow Smite yawned and stretched under the sheet. It was a frightening sight for the poor dwarves, who cowered on the floor. A monster, they gasped. Doc gathered all his courage and pulled back the sheet. Why, it's a girl, he exclaimed. Snow White was very surprised to see seven dwarves peering at her from the foot of the bed. Why, you're not children, she said, sitting up. You're men. Okay, so I'm in... Oops. One minute. I should grab my bookmark. Mm, sorry, sorry. I'm going to stop the video here because it's getting long, but I hope you guys like the first part of me reading Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you in part two. I mean, re me rereading Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you in part two.